Hi Q, season three, episode nine, the volleyball idiots. Would that refer to Carsuno? Flashing back a little bit. In this situation, I feel like seconds feel like hours, just itching to get back. Remember when Suki didn't care? He's still in the game. He's playing from the med station. And now he's back. <laughs> so we can't stop being it's such a great part of the season. It's unbelievable. What a character growth, character arc. I was gonna say get back in, but that's a relief. Damn, that is not look good. <laughs> Still the same interpersonal relations. Man, every decision now is crucial. You couldn't really remove anyone and have it be the same team. It's part of the beauty of it. Nice! Here we go. Man, walking into the game during a deuce. <laughs> I mean, he did great. Honestly. They could have gone really badly, but yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> That's so cool. See them side by side like that after all that arguing. Allies on the battlefield. Don't hold back on that jump surf. Timing has accidentally worked out in my favor, where I'm posting to YouTube about one season behind where I am on Patreon. Making thumbnails, I revisit these episodes. Everything that is happening in this season has been so carefully built and crafted. It's like not one detail was irrelevant. Some details jump into my mind more than others, like Asahi holding back on the jump serve was really significant for me at the time, and so it's easy for me to remember, but there's just so many details that go into the characters and the team as a whole that culminate with this championship. It's pretty remarkable. No one got faked out of that one. It's kind of predictable. I mean, they go to him 90% of the time, it seems. Can you do it again? Can we get a Suki Pete? What's up? What's up? Oh, man. It's not stupid at all. I love it. He sees the growth, too. It's going to Ushiwaka. What a shock. They've gotten it. I mean, they seem to have figured it out down to a system. Oh, his hand's shaking. That's what they do. Oh, hit the net. Yeah, they're so- they're very subtly changing his behavior, which is their whole plan. <laughs> He's just all in. Total commitment. Tanaka doesn't miss. That's my thesis, and I'm sticking to it. There it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. One point away from doing the impossible. Their strategy took five sets to come to fruition, but it's happening. That patience. For some reason, this reminds me of a conversation I had with a, a good friend of mine a long time ago, and he's one of the most successful people I know, speaking of never missing. It concerned his philosophy about approaching problems or tasks or things he needs to accomplish. And the way he put it is that he's process-oriented, not results-oriented. And saying that way might be a little bit misleading because, of course, the aim is results, right? But there's a subtle difference in focus. There are important differences in terms of how you measure your success and progress. If you're completely fixated on the results and making things happen, it's easy to cut corners take a very short-term view or narrow view of the problem. If you're process-oriented, you're getting positive feedback from yourself about how well you do the groundwork. And I think it's a tougher approach because it requires more patience and re requires some delayed gratification at times and also tremendous faith in your vision of the process. But doing that right, focusing on the foundation, building piece by piece, the hope, and I think belief that a lot of people who do that have is that if you do that part correctly, you are guaranteed to have some success in some way, even if it's not the exact result you're aiming at. But you also will be building yourself up as a whole. You will be 
that much more resilient, that much stronger, and on a personal level, you can take satisfaction in the fact that you did things correctly. Karasuna has been such a great example of that, perhaps starting with Hinata and Kakuyama kind of undoing their habits a little bit, going back to the foundation, mastering everything, taking a ton of L's, like think about that training camp, going through a tremendous amount of pain, but just having faith in their vision and thinking longer term. We see that again here with their blocking strategy, right? Like it just seemed like it wasn't working, but Suki believed in it and the team believed in him and his and his plan. They let him lead. And finally in the final hour, it might make all the difference. You might even be able to say that Shiro Torizawa is results oriented. They're just like, let's get the biggest hitters and just crush it. And that's it. Forget foundations. Just swing for the fence every time. For me, that's been a really useful thing to think about because I think I have a tendency to skip steps and to seek out quick wins because that's how I get my satisfaction and, and that's what creates the feedback loop for myself as opposed to like the deeper, okay, I'm doing things correctly. I'm in the right place feeling of being very process focused. And you better take a time out. No surprise, they're, they're one point away. They're the Velociraptors throwing themselves against the fence, looking for a weakness. Exactly, that's what I was just saying. But I think it's somewhat backwards, that analysis. They are wild, but they're also very, very careful and calculating. I think it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at their play style, Karasuno is wild. But that's not really the full story. The full story is they've been building this. They've been building all the tools so that they can have this really versatile system. You can contrast them with the team they played against in Season 2. I can't remember their names. Who were that sort of unorthodox, wild style. Play to have fun. Do what's the most exciting team. They're very different fundamentally in their, their core. <laughs> Fell into his binary trap. Tanaka literally has to punch his legs while running to keep going. Yeah, I mean, that's apparent. Oh, I can hear the difference in voice acting. <laughs> whoa, whoa, they're having a little bit of an existential meltdown right now. But they want to win. I don't see Ushiwaka not, like, performing till the end, though. <laughs> that was a great speech from the captain. You're gonna be a winner or a loser. Well, that looked like a good one. No, I was out. Yeah. That was too abrupt <laughs> for an anime ending for a game. That would have been a really bold choice. Oh my god. Of course. Who else would it be? That was out too. That was out. That was out. That was out. Out. Co judge? Judge? Yes. Finally doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Deji was saying, I'm not gonna change now. All out. That's a big theme of this season, or the last two seasons. Just going for it. Living a little bit past that comfortable edge. Hinata <laughs> going up. Oh, they jumped pretty early. Someone could come from behind. Oh. Suki was in the back row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were clearly early. We need Suki up front. <laughs> he just rejuvenated himself. Oh, he's the idiot. These titles fool me so many times. Tanaka never misses. Nice decoy. Oh, he's doubling down on his failed philosophy. <laughs> and not as a just weird existential threat to his whole life. He's never dealt with it. Oh, it could have been it right there. Oh, just one more. Oh, he saw himself, his ghost next to Hinata. It's gonna hurt, coach. I mean, he did say go for the one that smells like the most satisfaction. That would have been the most satisfying for that moment. He had that meta-awareness. They heard the coach's internal monologue. Again, that's also been set up in more than one way. But what comes to mind is that loss, the first loss against Awa Josai, the final point ending on a rejection, and the subsequent noodle crying, but more importantly, the self-reflection. Yes. 
There we go. There we go. We've been consistently leading by a point. How many times are we gonna go through this cycle? Did his likes just give out? It's easy to be frustrated just watching, but the level of endurance they're showing is unreal. It's a long ass game. Oh no, not now. <laughs> and that is up too. Whoa, he got. From the floor. In Ushuaka's face, no less. <laughs> Why do we. <laughs> Coach and they get to look just as tired. Great moment. Oh no, Hinata's serving historically not the greatest of the team. Yeah, this is... Right, this is kind of very attack focused. Did he just foresee their coming attack? All these mid-air flashbacks. <laughs> so he just gets better and better throughout the game. Synchronize attack, synchronize attack, synchronize attack. From the back? Oh, come on. It's cliffhanger, isn't it? <laughs> really gonna leave it to the last episode? I thought we'd have like an episode long uh, epilogue. It's hard to like cover this episode just because there's so many things happening so quickly. It's like every 30 seconds has something or has some thematic significance or is the culmination of a long building thing or is an important character development. I was thinking earlier that one of my biggest surprises about this show is when I think about sports anime or if I imagine how a sports anime would be done, it would be one season of the show would be one season of their games and it would be kind of a contained plot within each season. But to my pleasant surprise, Haikyuu is just as much of a long arcing story as just about anything else. I don't know if that will extend into future seasons, but just speaking of season one, two, and three, it's been so well built and I think that's part of what makes season three so satisfying. Like I said before, nothing feels accidental. And I didn't even realize going through season one and two the first time, maybe perhaps because of my expectations, how critical each little thing was. In this episode alone, uh, Suki's just amazing. He's just the character that just keeps giving this season. Nishinoya's speech, Daichi's leadership, the whole team's resilience. Hinata shining as usual, but especially in this episode I feel, and being a very important counterpoint to the coach. The coach really being there to highlight Hinata's greatness, I think, as well as just generally covering something that is a really interesting topic to me, which is being at that point of total concession. Like, it's just not possible for me. And that being a very dangerous place to be in. You need to advance your spirit somehow. You have the urge to advance your spirit. And if you can't do that yourself, the temptation and the natural instinct is to go for others and take them down and wish for their failure, which is exactly what the coach is doing. He's so entrenched in his own grief, let's call it, misery and has been there for so long that Hinata, this kid, is a threat to his whole existence. It's a terrible place to end up. It's like so important to find a way to get what you need. And speaking of which, that suggests to me that the coach has never gotten what he needs in anything because I think the beauty of not being successful or not being able to be successful in a very specific domain is that success is fungible. So as long as you've placed an importance on the thing and it's valuable to you and represents something of significance like hard work and application of intelligence, synthesis of information or whatever, then it will still satisfy that purpose. It will still give you what you're you're looking for. I believe that one significant success in something meaningful to oneself has a way of remedying past failures. You find that people who kind of live in that world of resentment and bitterness like the coach does, both haven't been able to get that and don't believe they can ever get that because if they did that hope might be a sufficient substitute in the interim feeling like you will be successful or you're on the path of success is very close to the feeling of success itself contrast that to Hinata who just cannot be stopped you know like there's no doubt in his mind there's definitely a healthy amount of fear there's the knowledge that he might not be successful but there's no wavering in his commitment or faith or that is that fear is not an impediment to him giving his all and he's able to reap the benefits of that Kageyama also not just for his effort but for his team playing his unselfishness even the the character who came in off the bench whose name I, I'm ashamed to say I still don't know came in and did his part right what more can you ask for weirdly as much as I want to see them get a win and also I, I kind of believe they will win just thinking about the way the teams have been built and the the philosophies of the two opposing teams and me just believing overall in Karasuna's approach as it's been laid out so carefully I actually care less and less about the outcome just because it's so satisfying like it's already given so much but man what a victory the next episode be sweet